Hello and welcome to a great day here on The Jet Set. We've got lots planned today. Coming up, we've got the food cities you should visit for a culinary adventure. Mm, then we're biting into unique ways to incorporate food into travel. But first, we're talking travel news on Here's This. All of this and so much more is about to take off right here on The Jet Set. Welcome aboard. Bobby Lori and Nikki Noya have your ticket to travel, food, fitness, and everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. Grab your boarding pass. It's time to jet set. Grab a life vest because we're setting sail for travel news on Here's This. The Ritz-Carlton Yacht Collection is growing. The luxury brand's second ship, Ilma, departed on its maiden voyage this month. The vessel, which will spend its inaugural season sailing the Mediterranean, was fittingly named for the Maltese word for water. Mm. The 790-foot-long Ilma is larger than 624-foot predecessor Ev Evrima? Evrima. Evrima, sure. Which launched, in, which launched in 2022. Quote, it is with immense pride and excitement that we welcome Ilma to our growing fleet, said executive chairman and CEO Jim Murren in a news release. Quote, since Evrima's Sure. Mm -hmm. Debut, we have been steadfast in our pursuit of excellence at sea. The addition of Ilma signifies a continuation of our mission to deliver legendary service and unparalleled enjoyment to all guests. Now, along with the Mediterranean, the 448 guest ship will operate cruises in the Caribbean and Northern Europe, ranging from three to 13 nights. And the ship's week-long maiden voyage from Monte Carlo, Monaco to Rome, Italy, includes stops in Saint-Tropez, France, uh, but Batista on the island of Corsica and Livorno as well as Tuscany. I'd like to do every single one of these itineraries. Have you seen the ships? I have not seen the ships. Oh, I mean, they're... I've seen like, I've seen some of their other ships, but these two new ones. Stunning. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's very just, Nikki. it's very Nikki. It's so stunning. And I cannot wait to go on these ships. It looks so nice. Have you already booked yourself? <laughs> I've been very good this year, <laughs> Santa baby. <laughs> oh, is that is that your hope? Because yeah. like that? that one year we surprised you with Iceland and then the world melted. <laughs> yeah, I got to do it my own. <laughs> I mean, so these sailings currently range from $5,200 to $14,900 per person mm -hmm. based on double occupancy cap. Oh yeah, I mean, this, this is not coming at, uh, uh huh. It's very high end, it's very luxurious, and so well appointed, and it comes with all of the trappings that you would expect them to have, so I can't wait. All right, let's mm -hmm. see if Nikki gives that to us this year for Christmas. <laughs> Europe's aviation safety regulator will require airlines to conduct a one-time fleet inspection of fuel hoses on some Airbus A350 aircraft. What? The move announced by the European Aviation Safety Agency follows an in-flight engine fire that erupted on a Cathay Pacific flight on September 1st, shortly after takeoff from Hong Kong to Zurich. The aircraft was powered by a Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engine. Now, the fire led Cathay Pacific to inspect engines on each of its 48 A350 airplanes, identifying that 15 of them needed replacement of engine fuel lines. What? The carrier expects to complete those replacements uh, shortly and has canceled over about 90 flights because of this issue. What is going <laughs> on? What, I just think- What is happening? So it's not unusual for like, it's just like your car. There's recalls issued all the time. All the time. So like as these planes are in service, you're finding these issues that need more maintenance than regularly, you know, than, than you would have initially thought when the airplane was rolled out. Like when the Boeing 787 first came up, first came out, mm -hmm. it was, oh, there was a problem with it all the time. And in fact, there was a battery that continuously went on fire Not until good. they figured that out and changed that. And then Boeing had all these other problems. But now we're talking about Airbus. Um, and that's a really long flight. That yeah. is a long flight. So I wonder like how far into the flight were they? And then all of a sudden they were like, uh, something's on fire. We need to turn around or land somewhere. Do you know what happened? I don't know what happened. Oh my God, you guys But all we know happening. is that they're fixing it so that it doesn't happen again. Well, that's great news. Yes, and they're doing it a lot faster than Boeing has done with their issues. Oh my God, Cafe Pacific, let's get back up in the air. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I know. All right, we'll be right back with more of the Jet Set in just a moment.
With school back in session, you can bet families are busy. Connected mom and tech lifestyle expert Carly Knobloch joins us with the technology and innovations that can help busy parents. Hi, Carly. Hi. Always love joining you on the Jet Set. And yep, this is a busy time for families. So I've teamed up with these brands today that I think will really help parents out. So if you're a mom like I am, you're concerned about how screen time is affecting your kids' eye health. And the good news is that more devices like these here are available with healthier e-ink, e paper screens. With the average person spending a whopping seven hours a day looking at screens, e-paper mimics the look of traditional paper, reducing eye strain and blue light exposure compared to backlit LCDs. Kids are back in school, parents are busy, and pest control is just one more thing to worry about. But the Zevo Flying Insect Trap solves the problem. Its UV and blue light technology attracts and traps house flies, fruit flies, and gnats. And you can find these in mass retailers. Now, for peace of mind, once the school day is over, parents want a way to keep an eye on kids at home even if they're still at work. Ecobee's Total Security and Savings Bundle can do just that. I love how you can get an alert on your phone when your kids get home, which is instant peace of mind. And you can talk to them through the two-way talk on the doorbell, too, and make sure they get going on their homework. Now, as a mom, I find the most daunting part of back to school is all the paperwork, the permission slips, the after school programs, and the medical forms. With the DocuSign app, you can manage it all effortlessly. With just a few taps on your phone or your tablet, you can fill out, sign, and send back documents securely from wherever you are. The whole process is fast, simple, and the best part is it's completely free. And then lastly, everyone in the family is looking for a laptop that's well-priced, lightweight, and has a long battery life. And I've got one right here. It's the Asus VivoBook S15. 19 hours of battery life. And their OLED screen gives incredible visuals in any environment. Plus, super easy access to AI tools like a dedicated Microsoft Copilot key and the Asus exclusive StoryCube app that helps you manage all your photos, videos, and files with ease. And for more info on everything I covered, including links, just head over to inthenews.tv. Thanks, Carly. We've got to take a quick break, but we've got lots more of the Jet Set coming up in just 60 seconds. Food isn't just a necessity when you're traveling, it's a window into a destination's culture, history, and way of life. So today, we're biting into it on Taste the World, unique ways to incorporate food into your travels. Mm, for the adventurous traveler, incorporating food into your journey can elevate the entire experience. Here are some unique and exciting ways to make your next trip a culinary adventure. All right, this is something we hear all the time. Mm -hmm farm to table, mm -hmm. or you can do a farm to table tour. Mm -hmm. Why not go straight to the source? Many destinations from Tuscany's Rolling Hills to Napa Valley's vineyards offer farm to table experiences where you can tour organic farms, meet local farmers, and see firsthand how your food is grown. Finish it off with a meal prepared from fresh, locally sourced ingredients. It's a delicious way to connect with the land. Nikki. We love a farm to table, so why not go on a farm to table tour? I love it. But we also love this, Bobby, cooking classes with locals. Taking a cooking class in the heart of a new country is one of the best ways to immerse yourself in its culinary traditions. Learn to roll pasta in Italy, whip up spicy street food in Thailand, or bake traditional baguettes in France. These hands-on experiences allow you to bring the flavors of your journey back home while gaining insight into local culture through its food. And through yeah. your hand gestures. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> street food adventures. Some of the world's best dishes are found right on the streets. From the bustling food markets of Mexico City uh, to the night markets of Taipei, street food offers an authentic taste of local life. Join a food tour or follow your nose as you sample everything from banh mi in Vietnam to tacos al pastor in Mexico. It's a great way to eat like a local without breaking the bank. It's would, some of the best food comes off. Some of comes the from best food, foods. speaking of Iceland, when Juan and I were in Iceland. I like how you say speaking of Iceland. We weren't talking about Iceland, but sure, let's, let's, just, let's just change the conversation to Iceland. Go let's right ahead. Let's go back to Iceland yeah. because Juan and I had one of the best meals I've ever had in my entire life on one of the food tours through around really? Reykjavik. I mean, it was so delicious and it was a restaurant that you would never kind of know about. Mm. First of all, it was a little local place. So speaking of Iceland, we'll get back to it. Okay. <laughs> Culinary festivals. Time your travels around food festivals to experience a destination's vibrant food culture, whether it's the Maine Lobster Festival in the US or 
La Tomatina in Spain, food festivals give you the chance to try local specialties, meet passionate foodies, and join in on exciting food-related traditions and events. That sounds fun. It does. Now, we've done a lot of these. Hmm. Winery and brewery tours. Oh, we love those. <laughs> Savoring yes. local wine and beer is another way to immerse yourself in the flavors of a region. From the rolling vineyards of France to the craft breweries of Portland, exploring local wineries and breweries offers a fun and educational way to taste regional specialties. Some wineries and breweries even offer hands-on experiences like grape stomping or beer brewing classes. I would love to see you grape stomping. That would okay. make my year. You want to go on a luxury yacht for Christmas. I just want to see a big vat full of grapes right here and you going like, oh, I love Lucy. I would have so much fun. <laughs> what was the beer? Remember when we were in Knoxville and we went to the brewery and we were trying beers and there was like a weird beer there and I tried it and it was yes. very weird. What was that? Oh my God. But we had so much fun. I don't remember what it was, but it was a sour beer. Yeah. It was a sour beer. That's all I remember because your facial reaction came this way. <laughs> All right, incorporating food into your travel can turn an ordinary trip into a sensory journey that connects you with the heart of the destination. So next time you travel, let your taste buds be your guide and discover the world one bite at a time. Start planning your culinary adventure today at thejetset.com. And coming up, I'm talking to author of The Cheesemaker's Daughter, Kristen Vukovic, about how her food experiences while traveling inspired her writing. For the cheese connoisseurs out there, can it be possible that you're eating cheese from the wrong European country? When you think cheese in Europe, most of the time you think Switzerland or France, but what if we told you you should be looking at Croatia? Well, our next guest says just that, and she's got a story to tell you. Kristen Vukovic is author of the book, The Cheesemaker's Daughter, and she joins us now. Hi, Kristen, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Okay, before we talk about your book, let's talk about cheese, my favorite. I've not heard about cheese from Croatia, and I've been to many cities there, but you say Posh, Pog, is where the cheese making is, and how did you discover that? Yes, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long story um, that started in 2011. Uh, I was just beginning my travel writing career, actually, and um, I visited this island called Pog, and um, I was reporting for the now defunct Croatian Chronicle, which was a bilingual newspaper, and reported on this cheese festival. And let's just say it, it was really fun and ended up with dancing on the tables, which was amazing. Um, and I said, I should just report on cheese more often. I love it. And, and this is an amazing island. And so um, the cheese is really special. It's, it's only able to be produced on this island. It has unique climactic conditions that contribute to its uniqueness, um, such as this hurricane strength wind that blows uh, herbs from Velibit Mountain and um, also like the sea salt onto the pastures and the sheep of course consume this and um, it flavors their milk uniquely. Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, so you discovered this island rooted in cheese and it seems since then you've been quite obsessed with it and rightfully so, but you also say production is diminishing. Why is that? You know, there are a number of factors. I mean, some of it is just a global aspect of uh, a move away from agrarian life. Um, some of it is also, uh, they had unfortunately a 20% less um, yield this year for, for the milk production. Um, and then, you know, it's really, it's always been a very small batch, small production. There are 35,000 sheep on the island and 8,000 people. And that sounds like a lot of sheep, but they don't give a lot of milk. They're, um, uh, they're a endemic breed called Promenka and they're like, they're a lot smaller than what you might think of like the Australian sheep or something. So, um, so there's a number of factors which makes it so, um, you know, coveted and so unique. Well, this is a story and a cheese worth preserving, but what if we can't get our hands on the cheese itself? We can grab a copy of your book, The Cheesemaker's Daughter, which is also set on Pog. Am I pronouncing that right? Is it Pog? It, it is Pog. Yes, exactly. You're exactly right. Oh, okay. Well, how did your love cheese inspire you to write this book? So I think it was my love of cheese, which is very longstanding, um, but also just my love of this island, which is really unique among Croatia's more than a thousand islands. It has this kind of moonscape terrain. It's, it's really kind of very special uh, among Croatian islands. So you know, I fell in love with the sheep's milk cheese and kind of the story behind it and the story of people's connection to the to the land and to the sheep and the cheese. And um, 
and how everything seemed very interwoven in a way that um, was just begging to be written about in a story. So that really inspired uh, both the landscape and the cheese inspired uh, my debut novel, The Cheesemaker's Daughter. Well, congratulations. And for those of us that want to follow your travels, where can we grab the book and follow you for more information? Yes. So um, it's uh, definitely available uh, on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and you can request it at your local indie bookstore and they will be able to get it for you. Um, and I am most active, I would say, on Instagram. So you can follow my travels and pick up a copy of this. I, I generally post about places that I travel and I will be traveling to Croatia at the, at the end of August, early September. So well, you have inspired me because I love cheese too. So I think I'd need a, a trip to Croatia. Kristen, thank you so much for joining us. Great, thank you. I, you definitely need another trip to Croatia. <laughs> We've got to take another short break, but don't go anywhere. We've still got lots more of the Jet Set to come. For food lovers, travel is more than just seeing new sites. It's about tasting the world. Some cities are renowned for their culinary scenes, offering unforgettable dishes that are as much a part of the experience as the landmarks. Whether you're craving street food, fine dining, or local specialties, here are some of the best cities around the globe to visit for a true culinary adventure. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's get started with Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo is a paradise for food enthusiasts from its bustling street food markets to its 200 plus Michelin starred restaurants. Feast on authentic sushi at the famous Tsukiji fish market, slurp up bowls of ramen in hidden alleyways, or try fine kaiseki dining for a traditional multi-course meal. Tokyo's food scene offers an unmatched blend of modern innovation and time-honored techniques. I want to do all of that Yeah, stuff. I would love to go to Japan. I haven't been. Well, let's go. I know. We really need to make that happen. Mm. Let's, let's put that out there in the universe mm -hmm. for season 10. Japan. Okay. New Orleans, known for its vibrant food culture, New Orleans is a must visit for lovers of bold, rich flavors. Dive into iconic Creole and Cajun dishes like gumbo, jambalaya, and beignets, mm. or enjoy fresh seafood at the city's many down-to-earth oyster bars. Whether you're dining at a classic French Quarter restaurant or sampling street food at a festival, New Orleans promises an unforgettable food journey. I did something in New Orleans that uh, would be considered embarrassing, but I didn't even care. I licked the plate <laughs> in New Orleans. It was so good that I didn't care. I had to have all of it. Okay, but what, what, I, what were you licking? What exactly it was like, did you uh, eat? It was like a shrimp with the most delicious sauce. And I don't even know what it was, but I just said, I'm sorry, everybody, but I got to get I got to get this. And I did. And everyone, <laughs> I got this. a round of applause from everyone in the restaurant because I was like, hold on, this is so good. I would have paid to see that. Mm -hmm. Well, then we're going to go to Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona is a foodie <laughs> haven known for its lively tapas culture. Enjoy small <laughs> plates of patatas bravas, jamón ibérico, and fresh seafood or bustling tapas bars, or take in a more traditional meal with a plate of paella by the Mediterranean. Doesn't that sound so it nice does. right now? I, it the does. city is also home to innovative chefs who are pushing the boundaries of modern Spanish cuisine. Don't forget to pair your meal with a glass of cava or local wine. I was just in Madrid and we had paella like literally every day we were in Madrid. That was lunch every single day. Was it so good? Yeah, I mean you you can't you can't say no to it, especially when when you're there. Just delicious. Did okay. you have sangria too? My I, favorite. Yes, we did. Oh. Yes. All right, moving on to Bangkok, Thailand now. For a true street food experience, Bangkok is unbeatable. Wander through the city's vibrant markets and sample spicy pad thai, aromatic green curry, and fiery uh, somtam, which is a papaya salad. Bangkok street vendors serve up dishes that rival the best restaurants, making it a go-to destination for affordable, flavorful eats. For a more refined dining experience, which is what Nikki enjoys, <laughs> the city also boasts world-class restaurants that fuse traditional Thai flavors with modern culinary techniques. I can close my eyes and smell the lime and the coconut and, and the, the lemongrass and the curry and all of those delicious smells. Oh my, the food have you is been? so good. I have. Why haven't you taken us? This was actually before we met. Oh. 
in the last century, I believe. It was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Why don't you take me? Why don't we go again? We should. Let's do again, it. Again, let's go season 10. Well, let's put it out there. Yeah. Because then we're also going to go to Lyon, France, often called the culinary capital of France. Actually, the world, I think. Lyon is a food lover's dream, known for its bouchon restaurants, where you can savor hearty traditional Lyonnaise dishes like quenelle, Coquevon. This city is a celebration of classic French cooking. Lyon is also famous for its proximity to the Côte du Rhône wine. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Delicious. Offering the perfect pairing for every meal. Did you just have a moment? I <laughs> needed a, a moment to myself because I was reminiscing about all the delicious food that I had in Lyon. Remember I did that Viking yes, river I cruise? Yes, I remember. And every single thing I ate was just awesome. Awesome. Glad mm -hmm. to hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get another trip I wasn't invited on. <laughs> Mexico City, Mexico. Bursting with flavor and history, Mexico City is a hub for both traditional and contemporary Mexican cuisine. Feast on authentic tacos al pastor, flavorful mole dishes, and fresh ceviche. The city is home to vibrant street food vendors and fine dining restaurants like Pujol, Ooh, yeah. known for its innovative take on Mexican flavors. Every meal in Mexico City tells a story of rich culinary traditions and creativity. So I think that all of these places are on my absolute list of where to go in 2025. So it okay. all, and it all correlates with food places. So what does that say? You should talk to everyone behind the camera because you're talking about keeping them on the road for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Back up kids, because then we're going to Istanbul, Turkey. Ah, Istanbul's food scene. This is a place that you've been to that I've never been to. Good, finally. It is a fusion of flavors from both Europe and Asia. Taste your way through the city's bustling markets, indulging in kebabs, meze, mm -hmm. and freshly baked baklava. Don't don't miss out on a traditional Turkish breakfast featuring olives, cheeses, and a hot cup of Turkish tea. Mm -hmm. This is also, again, one of like my top places and that I want to go. Turkish coffee. You haven't had coffee till you've had Turkish coffee. Really? Talking about a jolt waking yeah. you up. Oh, I love it. From street stalls to Michelin star dining, these cities offer unforgettable culinary experiences that will leave your taste buds craving for more. Are you ready to take your taste buds on a journey? Well, plan your next food inspired trip today at thejetset.com. We've got to take one last break, but I've got your dose of travel inspiration still to come, and you don't want to miss it. Okay, everybody, it's time again for your daily dose of travel inspiration on the go, where today we're sending you to explore the Mediterranean's iconic shores on Viking ocean cruises. This is one of the most popular. It is. For sure. Everyone loves this one because you're going to witness wonders of east and west. Pack your binoculars. Explore coastal gems and take in magnificent sights on this epic voyage that combines iconic Western Mediterranean, Italian sojourn, Venice, the Adriatic, and Greece, and ancient Mediterranean treasures. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Visit bustling ports and humble hamlets and sail around Italy's boot as you trace majestic shores. You couldn't see that one, Nikki. You're not even wearing boots. <laughs> <laughs> experience a wealth of timeless treasures. Overnights in Barcelona, Florence, Slash Pisa, mm -hmm. Venice, Athens, and Istanbul allow for a rich cultural immersion, see, and that I like is a that. lot. I like when the when the ship overnights because you don't feel so rushed, rushed to see the city, and you can really get a taste of all yeah. of those places. This journey is available now with discount airfare from the U.S. and free onboard credit just for booking by visiting oceanandriversailings.com. See, that's one of those cruises then that we can combine a lot of these destinations that you were just talking about mm -hmm. and do it in one trip. You're just like eating my way around Europe. Yeah. And then eating my way Just around Asia. Just make sure to pack your stretchy pants. <laughs> right? <laughs> you're going to need it. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.